In the last video, we saw that all reactions are in principle reversible, and that the more spontaneous a reaction is, the less likely its reverse reaction. But in the real world, whenever we're thinking about chemical reactions, we're thinking about trillions and trillions and trillions, moles even, of molecules colliding with each other. So even the most unlikely of reactions, that is, reactions that have pretty high activation energy barriers or large positive delta G values, happen every once in a while. Of course, spontaneous reactions with negative delta G values happen a lot more often. When we're thinking about gazillions of molecules flying around in a container, always moving, bumping into each other, lots and lots of reactions are happening. Spontaneous reactions happen relatively quickly and often, and non-spontaneous reactions happen more slowly and less often. This establishes a balance between spontaneous reactions being favorable and likely, and the reverse non-spontaneous reactions being relatively unfavorable and not as likely, but still possible. This balance is called dynamic equilibrium. If you put some reactant molecules together in a container, at first, only the forward reaction is possible, since no products are present yet. Once some products form, the reverse reaction also occurs, though maybe only a little bit. Eventually, the system of reactants and products reaches a point where the net concentrations of products and reactants remain constant, even though both the forward and the reverse reactions are still occurring. This is dynamic equilibrium, a state of balance between starting materials and products. And lucky for chemists, there's a particular mathematical relationship that holds once this balance is achieved. For a given reaction at equilibrium, that is, once it's had enough time to reach this balanced state of affairs, there is a numerical constant called the equilibrium constant, KEQ, that describes the ratio of products and reactants. For the, for the generic reaction A plus B goes to C plus D with stoichiometric coefficients A, B, C, and D, the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentrations of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the concentrations of the reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. There's one important convention here. When writing an equilibrium expression, we only include reactants and products that are either gases or dissolved substances, that is, solutes. We exclude pure solids and pure liquids. We do this because the concentrations, that is, the number of moles per liter, of these sorts of substances don't change during a chemical reaction. Every chemical reaction has its own unique equilibrium constant, which is measured at a particular temperature. These constants cover a huge range from 10 to the minus 50 to 10 to the positive 50 or so. The larger the equilibrium constant, the higher the concentration of products at equilibrium. And inversely, the lower equilibrium constant means that reactants are favored at equilibrium. If KEQ for a particular reaction is equal to 1, we say the reaction is completely reversible. For practical purposes, we say that reactions with equilibrium constants between, oh, about 10 to the minus 3 and 10 to the plus 3 are reversible. And those with larger or smaller equilibrium constants are pretty irreversible. But you should remember, reversibility is a continuum. 
and the equilibrium constant is a measure of how reversible a particular reaction is.